Good morning, good, good morning, morning, good, good morning. morning. Happy Resurrection Day. Happy Resurrection Day. And welcome, welcome. And welcome to our Rehoboth pre-show live stream. We are so excited to have you with us and to spend Easter with us, whether you are online, whether you're watching from home, whether you are driving to church, we just want to say welcome. Welcome. We thank you all for coming out, watching our live stream, whether you're in the sanctuary. Can we hear that for those in the sanctuary? Woo! You're early to service. Right. You got your seat. I mean, I see everyone in their pretty whites. I see pinks. Oh, They're I looking am I see some church hats. Where the church hats? Uh oh, if you have not seen Sister Pearl in her lovely church hat, I'm telling you, you're missing out. The saints have come out to worship. And again, whether you're worshiping online, you're at home, in the kitchen, or at work, we invite you to be participative in our service. All right. Last week, this week, we had an amazing fish fry. How many of Ooh. you in the audience bought some fish? So much yeah. fish. It was so good to the point that we are still selling fish. We have so much fish still left out. We will continue selling our fish even after service. So after we finish an amazing expectation of God that we are expecting this service, you can head downstairs and get your fish dinner. Yeah, and I'm telling you, our, our staff has done such a great job. Yeah. Uh, this is an annual fundraiser, and it encapsulates the essence and the spirit of our holiday because we as West Indians... When it comes time for Easter, we make sure there's fish, fish in the house, right? So if you have not been able to participate in our fundraiser, please stop downstairs and buy your, your fish dinner, all right? And not only did we have our annual fish fry, but we had our Good Friday oh, service. that's right. Oh my gosh. Woo. This past Friday, we had a wonderful time of worship with seven different speakers bringing in the seven last sayings of Jesus. We had dynamic speakers coming, from, speaking on their perspective of what Jesus said on the cross and what he did for us um, during his final moments. If you missed it, I invite you to please okay. go online, rewatch the live stream. I mean, we heard from people in our congregation members who have shared their little piece about what they brought to the table about what Jesus did. I'm Minister Stephen Wilson spoke. Was preaching, wasn't he? He was preaching. Oh my word. Woo! Yeah, see, we see him on a Sunday jumping up and down and singing. Singing. But he had his laptop out. Come on. And he was preaching. <laughs> Prepared and preaching. We so love that. So again, if you missed it, please go online and you can take a look at um, the, the Good Friday service. And one more thing, in the spirit of the holiday, one thing that we've also started doing is our annual art showcase. Yeah. Yes. Go ahead, and, tell us about and that. And right now, if you go out in the lobby, we have our Rehoboth banner with beautiful balloons that you can go ahead and take your picture. And then towards the right of the lobby, we have our art display beautiful. with several stories of the beautiful. Bible. Please go ahead and take a look. For those of you in the audience, if you head through towards the main entrance and go towards your left, you can see our beautiful Easter display. And you know the thing about our art exhibit, our Easter display is all of the work is original. Yes. It came directly from the artists, the photographers, our production team here at Rehoboth. So if you want to come su uh, support our artists, see what else we're doing, um, because a lot of times you just see us on your camera, on your phones, on your TVs, right on your laptops. But you don't see that these are talented artists that have decided to use their gifts to tell the story of Jesus Christ and share the message of the gospel. So if you have a moment, go ahead and support our artists by taking a look at that art exhibit. All right? All right. And one thing I personally love, they're all young adults. Come on now. We love that our young adults are Rise being able artists. to be used and raising their talents in our church. Awesome. And a couple uh, upcoming announcements for you guys, because you know, one thing about us as a Rehoboth community is that we are very active. We are very active, very involved in the community. Um, a few weeks ago, we had our serve day where we did Habitat for Humanity. Yes. We went to some of the senior houses and we helped, you know, provide our services to those who are in need. But this upcoming Friday, this we'll Friday. be back in the community with an event we're calling Faith, Food, and Community. I can't even hold it up. Look at me. Hey. 
<laughs> Faith, food, and community. You know, there it is. Okay, there we are. There it is. Awesome. You can no. go out right in the lobby yeah. and get one of these pieces of paper. We will be having faith, food, and community right at Omna's Restaurant. This is right here in Bloomfield. Yes. You can download it on your phone, smartphone, see my phone, whatever sort of device, or grab one of these flyers. You can go in, you can choose to dine in or take out, but a percentage of your meal will be donated right back into our church. Absolutely. So we're gonna encourage you, our Rehoboth family, to just go to Omna's on Friday, it's April 5th, Friday. between the times of 12 and 8 p.m. and purchase a meal. That's all you have to do. That's it. You know, instead of going and order out Domino's or any other place, Pizza Hut, I don't know if Pizza Hut's Chick-fil-A. Chick-fil-A, go to Pizza Omna's, Hut. purchase a meal in exact, what uh, percentage of our meals will be donated, donated back to our Rehoboth ministry. So if you want to look to see how can I get involved, how more I can help support our church. Eat food. Go and eat some food. <laughs> <laughs> as simple as that. Go eat some food. One very important announcement. If you have any children between the ages of 0 to 13, go gather them up. Ages 0 to 3 right now are in our nursery right up the hall and ages 4 to 12 you can go ahead and sign them in and they will go upstairs and learn the same concept of easter but in their age range i'm telling you guys you you see me perspiring i'm so excited for service I'm just so excited for what we're doing here at Rehoboth. It's the blessing sweating. Oh, it's, it's the blessing I'm telling you, down. I'm amped. I'm amped. The choir, we're all in we our white. That. I have a rag, a white rag in my pocket. I'm getting ready for Matching church. Rag. <laughs> you better match. So a little couple um, upcoming events we have. Um, April 20th, we're going to be having our church security conference. This is a chance for us as a church as ministry leaders, for those who are looking to learn more about how we can keep our congregation safe, how we can keep our community safe, for us to come in and learn, to see, okay, what can I do to contribute to a safe environment? So this uh, April, 20, April 19th and April 20th, Lions Heart will be having a church security conference. For our members, it's $35, and for our community, it's $55. We invite you, whether you are a leader, ministry leader, a uh, department director, or just a lay member who's looking to invest in the community, please come on out and learn about how we can contribute to a safe and welcoming environment here at Rehoboth. All right? We also continue with some, some upcoming dates. One of my favorite events, Friends and Family Weekend. Woo! Oh, my word. Woo! Is that coming up? It's coming up. Oh, wow. Okay. Look how quick that came. Yeah. <laughs> we start off our Friends and Family Weekend with a night of bowling. Whoa. All right. So one thing y'all don't know is I strike out all the time. Okay, most of the time, some of the time. Okay, a little bit. But we're telling you to come on out with your family, your friends, and let's come out for a time of bowling, for and fellowship. Even if you don't bowl, that's okay. Come on out and support our bowlers, fellowship with other members, bring out your family, bring out your friends. Yes. We will be having a great time. Absolutely. And the service will continue on Sunday morning with a live, impactful service. So again, bring, this is a time for us as a family to come together. Whether you have family members who may be, you know, serving at another ministry, maybe it's just time to say, hey, what about on this Sunday, we come together for a collective worship experience. Invite your aunts, your uncles, grandmas, grandmas. Your neighbors, your cousins, your classmates, Everyone's everybody. invited. Every, Facebook friends. Right. <laughs> the ones that see you post, tell them to come Everyone out to Rehoboth. Is invited, all right? And lastly, Inspiring Hope. Yeah. Inspiring Hope Summer Camp is taking place again this year, this summer. And we are asking you if you have any children, if you have any youth who are looking to be a part of a summer program, please get them in the building. Ages are what again? Ages of five to fifteen. Five to so not not everyone can come. I'm sorry for my four-year-olds. I'm sorry for sorry. my seventeen and eighteen-year-olds. But <laughs> if you're looking to get your children um, in the house of the Lord, if you're looking them looking to get them engaged this summer, instead of staying home watching TV, eating Cheetos, right? Invite them into the house of the Lord. All right. 
Now we are about to get into service, so stay tuned for our upcoming announcements and we'll see you live in church. Happy Resurrection Day.
morning. Good morning. Happy Easter morning. Happy resurrection morning. Welcome to church this morning. We are about to start and I'm going to ask you to stand please if it's possible. And I'm going to read for you today 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy hath begotten us again unto a lively hope by the dead. Praise the Lord for his word. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we worship and praise you this morning. We glorify you and magnify you. We lift you up and we adore you. We give you thanks, we give you praise, for this is the day that you have made. And we will rejoice and be glad in it. Many have passed and gone, oh God, but you have kept us. And it's for a reason. It's for a purpose. We come to glorify you this morning. We come to worship you. We come to lift you up. We come to give you glory and honor for all that you have done for us. You have been good to us more than we have been to ourselves. Oh, we are not in the grave this day. We are alive only through your love. Oh, we praise you. We worship you. We glorify you. We magnify you. We lift you up. We adore you. We give you praise from the rising of the sun, even to the going down. Thank you for life today. Thank you for bringing us together. We just come to praise you. We just come to worship you. We just come to glorify you. We come to magnify you. King of kings, Lord of lords, great I am, our rock, our refuge, our hiding place, our deliverer, our way maker. Ah, we worship you this morning. Blessed be the name of the Lord our God. And blessed be the God of our salvation. Pour out upon us your blessing. Cover us with your blood. Hide us under the shadow of the Almighty wings. Lord, we worship you today. We glorify you. We magnify you, Jehovah. You are risen and alive. Glory and honor and praise we give to you. Blessed be your name forever and ever. We give you praise this morning. We please to dwell among us. Touch every heart. Touch every mind. Touch every soul. Oh, we pray one for another today. May your glory shine round about us. And may your presence rest with us. May your love and call for us. And may we give you all the praise and all the honor. And all the glory. And let God's people say amen. And amen. And amen. Happy Resurrection Morning. Happy Resurrection Morning. If you're glad that Jesus is alive this morning, hallelujah. We've been healed by the blood. We've been set free by the blood. Hallelujah. We have a reason to rejoice this morning because he lives. We can face tomorrow. I see so many people just looking around. But before we sing, can we just lift up our hands and just shout out, thank you, Jesus. One more time, can you lift your hands and just say thank you, Jesus. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. All fear is gone. Because I know he holds my future, and life is worth a living just. Because he lives. Because 
and save him. You all are looking wonderful this morning. So Jesus paid it all. Jesus paid it all. that was shed on Calvary, the blood that gives us life, the blood that renews our strength from day to day. You 
so kind to me Before I took your breath You breathed your life in me oh, oh, oh. You've been so, so kind to me Sing on Oh, the overwhelming I don't deserve it, still you give yourself away. No shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. Thank you, God. There's no wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. There's no shadow, mountain you won't climb up, and there's no wall. See, there's no shadow, no shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. And there's no wall, no wall you won't kick down, fire you won't tear down, coming after me. There's no shadow, no shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't about where you were before the cross think about the wonderful change that he's made in your life we are no longer the same hallelujah but we've been changed sing there no shadow no shadow you won't light up mountain you won't climb up coming after me and there's the wall no wall you won't kick down
to you won't try one coming after me. What an amazing God. There's no wall you won't kick down. Lie you won't. Have you been lied on? Have you been cheated on? But this song is talking about the love of God and it's saying that there is no shadow that he won't light up. There's no mountain that he won't climb up for you and for me. What an amazing God we serve. Lift your hands and just worship him. Thank him for his love. Oh, love lifted me. Oh, love lifted me. When nothing else could help, love lifted me. Think about his love. Oh, love lifted me. Love lifted me. When nothing else could help, love lifted me. I want to guard against something this morning. This is a moment for you to encounter the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. For a few moments while you're in his presence, take advantage of reconnecting to this Father. So at this moment, I'm, I know you don't usually do this. I'm going to ask everyone to close their eyes right now, right where you are. I want you to quickly think about Friday. Jesus going to the cross. All of our sins, he predicted, he knew about. And he said that I would go to the cross and endure this suffering. And he did it anyway. He's buried. He's in the tomb. A few days later, while people counted him out, he rises with all power. And because of that power, we are free today. So can you thank God now for your freedom? Yes! Oh, love lifted me. Love lifted me. When nothing else could At the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light and the burning of my heart, it rolled away. It was there by I received.
Somebody shout unto God with the voice of triumph. Let's thank him for the cross. Hallelujah. 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 Let's give him praise. Let's give him praise. Let's give him worship. Bless the Lord on my soul. And all that is within me, bless his holy name. Matthew chapter 28, verse 1 through 6 says, In the end of the Sabbath, as it began to dawn towards the first day of the week, came Mary Magdalene and the other Mary to see the sepulchre. And behold, there was a great earthquake, for the angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat upon it. His countenance was like lightning and his raiment white as snow. And for fear of him, the keepers did shake and became as dead men. And the angel answered and said unto the women, Fear not ye, for I know that you seek Jesus, which was crucified. But this is the key. He is not here, for he is risen, as he said. Come and see the place where he lives. Will you just turn around to somebody and say, he is not here. He is risen. He's alive forevermore. Will you give the risen Savior a praise? Will you give the risen Savior a praise this morning? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. We want to welcome everyone to Rehoboth Church of God this morning, this Resurrection Sunday. My God, this is Resurrection Sunday, a day when we give special praise. It is one of the more significant days of the Christian uh, uh, festivals that we celebrate. And today we're glad that you're here today to worship with us. The women ran to the sepulcher that morning looking for Jesus. But guess what? He was not there. He is alive. Women, say he's alive. He's alive. He's alive. He's alive. Glory to God. I am so excited about that. Because because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Glory to God. Because he lives, all fear is gone. My God, and life is worth the living just because he lives. Woo! Wow. I'm just a little excited this morning. Calm down. I'm excited because he, he lives. And he died just for me. You got to put this thing individual. This is an individual experience. If it was just you, he would have died. Hallelujah. What love that is. Praise God. Welcome family. Welcome home. To those who we haven't seen in a while, we're happy you're here. We glad you came back home today. I want you to feel welcome. And I want you to know that every Sunday we are here waiting on you. So do come back. Be with us. Be a part of this family experience. We miss you when you're not here. So we are excited. Rehoboth, let them know we're excited that they're here today. Woo! Yes, we are. God bless you. Enjoy the service. May you be touched. May your life be transformed today. In Jesus' name. Amen. So Rehoboth is a place to belong, a place to grow and a place to serve. And just before you're seated, I just want you to turn around and just greet two or three people and let them know that they're welcome in the house of the Lord. Amen. Amen. As my wife said, there's so many guests that are visiting with us and so many that we have not seen in a while. And 
We're, we're so delighted to see you. I wouldn't start calling names because uh, we would get in trouble. Amen. We start to point out people, but we thank God for you. And we bless God that you are in the presence of the Lord. And if you have a problem finding a seat, I want you to know the ushers will help you, uh, assist you. Our children's church is going on, and they have planned a, a powerful service uh, for all of the children so you can um, uh, take them over and let them be a part. We want to thank God this past Thursday and, and Friday. Uh, you helped support our fish fry. I want you to just give yourselves a round of applause. That's one of our annual fundraisers and you did a tremendous job. Uh, I will tell you, we do have some uh, fish left over that we want to, not leftover fish, but we have some fish ready for you to perch. We have some fish ready for you to purchase downstairs. I had to change that real quick, you know, because some people will say, what are you talking about? Uh, but, but I want you to go downstairs and, 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 and you can purchase some for a very low price. Uh, they have them ready for you to just go home and, and prepare at home and so and much cheaper than you would get them anywhere else. So you could go downstairs directly following service and they will accommodate you. And then those of you that were here on this past Friday for our Good Friday service, what a tremendous time we had in the presence of the Lord. The Lord poured out. Each one of our seven speakers came and shared from their hearts what the Lord was saying to them through the word of God. And then our time of foot washing. Oh my goodness. It took us back, but it took us forward. Amen. Because we had a time of encouragement, a time of strength, a time of fellowship. Amen. And the Lord met us here. Amen. In a powerful way. And then on yesterday, our men went to our resurrection breakfast in Boston and over 19 of our men went and they came back with the award for the most men that participated in our regional activity. Thank God for our men's ministry. And we so appreciate them and celebrate them, amen, for what they are doing, amen, for the kingdom of God. And then I want to share with you, I hope they can put it up on the screen, uh, those of you that have been given towards our Rehoboth uh, school in Bangladesh, they asked you could be proud to know that our children now have uniforms, amen. Amen. And we celebrate, we celebrate you for your giving and your support. Join us for our video announcements. Hi, I'm Tony Ann, and these are your announcements. Everyone in our congregation, including ministers, elders, council members, ministry leaders, and all volunteers, play a vital role in safeguarding our church community. We urge the entire congregation to participate in the upcoming Church Security Conference from April 19th through the 20th. This crucial event organized in partnership with Lions Heart International Service Group and Rehoboth Church of God aims to provide comprehensive training on global church threats, identifying warning behaviors, enhancing mental health awareness, and developing effective communication skills. Registration, $35 for Rehoboth members and $55 for guests. This includes a welcoming reception on Friday at 6 p.m., followed by sessions on Saturday from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m., complete with meals and materials. Spread the word. This knowledge is essential for every church member. Register now to fortify our spiritual haven together. Food, faith, and community. Come out to join us at Amna's Restaurant this Friday in Bloomfield on April 5th between 12 p.m. and 8 p.m. You can choose to dine in or take your food to go. In the lobby, you can pick up a flyer or show it on your smartphone to the restaurant at the time of purchase. A set percentage of sales will be donated back to our church. Thank you in advance for coming out and supporting. We can't wait for another Friends and Family Weekend themed One Family Under God happening March 26th through the 28th. Kick off on Friday with a night of bowling. It promises to be a blast. Continue the weekend by bringing our friends and family who haven't met Jesus on Sunday service for a chance to win fabulous prizes. This gathering is a chance for all of us to unite under our faith and love for Jesus. Extend an invitation to your loved ones now. 
Be a part of this exhilarating experience this summer at Inspiring Hope Summer Camp, running from June 17th to August 9th. Immerse yourself in a summer filled with joy, creativity, and thrilling adventures. With a variety of activities including outdoor games, a treasure hunt, STEM projects, along with music and drama workshops, we offer the ideal mix of fun and educational experience. Register today, either online at rehobishcog.org or by contacting us at 774-262-4665. Seize the opportunity to forge new friendships and accumulate memories that will last forever. The registration fee is $190 until April 1st, after which it rises to $225 for children aged 4 to 15. For more information about these events and more, Go to RehobahCOG.org. Have a great week. As you can see, Rehoboth is very busy, and we want you to be a part of all that God is doing at Rehoboth. Our family and friends day will be April the 26th. We want all of you to come back and be with us. It's going to be a powerful time. And those of you who want to try and dare to beat the teams that won in bowling before, and you want to take up your team and be a part of the bowling night on that Saturday, please be a part, sign up, amen. We would love for you to take part in it. I want to just take this time to thank all of Rehoboth family for last Sunday and your tremendous giving to Project Gideon 300. You did a, an amazing job. Will you just give yourselves a round of applause? Come on, come on, give yourselves a round of applause. People gave online. Uh, people sent checks and people called from uh, different states, even different countries, to share that they want to be a part. Now, I know you may say, what is Project Gideon 300? Well, if you remember in Scripture, the Bible says that uh, the, the Israel was faced with the, the battle of, against the Midianites. And there were over 135,000 Midianites ready to consume, amen, the children of Israel. They had only 32,000 men. But God said, okay, I, if I let you win the battle with the 32,000, you'll think somehow, by some measure, you conquered the 135,000. So God dwindled the army down to 300 men. 300 men. What is 300 men against 135,000? But with God, all things are possible. And we're believing God that as our people have pledged to give $125 each quarter, that together we're going to do some tremendous things. God is going to bless us and help us to, to pay down existing debt. We're going to strengthen the existing ministries of our church. We're going to maintain our existing facilities. We're going to continue to expand on the vision that God has given to Rehoboth. And I want you to know today, you may be hearing about this for the first time, but you can participate also. There are some that shared with me that they were not able to be in service last week, but today they have come with their, their $125 from our first uh, day of giving, which was last Sunday. Uh, there will be three more times in the total total amount uh, for each member giving towards this purpose is $500. When you see God making something happen with the people coming together in unity, the Bible says that is the place where God commands his blessing forevermore. And I'm not just believing God for debt reduction on the church, on, on, on the different ministries that we do here, but I'm believing God for debt reduction, reduction on your life. I'm believing God to do for you the supernatural, the impossible. I'm believing for God to heal your body. Amen. To show his faithfulness in your families, in your marriages, with your children. To bring back people to the kingdom of God. Amen. Because of the gifts and the seeds you're sowing. As you can see, we're giving in world missions. We're not just reaching out to people in this community, but we're reaching out abroad. And we thank God for the ministry of Rehoboth and how God has taken us further and farther than we ever thought we could do. Now unto him that is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all we can ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. And it's through your giving, it's through your efforts that we're able to do this. And then there are those this morning that say, well, pastor, I have my first fruits offering. I want to give the first of the first unto the Lord. As the Lord has brought us into this new year of 2024, you may have a seed that you say, I want to lay on the altar and say, God, I want your blessings over my life this year. And if there are persons today that have a first fruits offering, I want you to come forth and I want you to stand at the altar now. You have a first fruit gift. 
I want you to come. And as they come, I want everyone to stand in the congregation, everyone standing in the congregation. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I believe this is the first Sunday we've had the opportunity to celebrate uh, the marriage of uh, uh, Sister Faith Barnett. I, I can't pronounce your last name, but thank God for you being here with your husband this morning. God bless you. And so we want to speak a blessing. And can I say this to you? There may be others that may have personal needs. You may be going through some physical problems in your body. You may have emotional distress. You may be facing some challenges with your finances. You may be going through some things in your family, with your marriage, with your children. There may be unspoken requests, things that you can't even talk about, but you know you need God to intervene. You need God to show up in a powerful way. And we believe in our God to do that today. So I want you to connect your hearts with one another that is in this house, and we're going to pray. Heavenly Father, we come before you, and we lift up the hearts of your people before you. Oh, God, we know that you're a prayer answering God. You're the God of all flesh, and there is nothing too hard for you. There may be someone in this house that's struggling. They're in the valley of decision. They're wrestling with life itself. Someone may be sick in their body, afflicted with different pains, different aches. God, we received a, a text this morning about a mother that had a stroke in Jamaica. We pray that God you'll touch her body. Another member that was suffering with different problems and complications. We thank God for how you've touched us the first body and, and she's back in the house of God with us. We thank you for touching Brother Bowen's body and we thank you for him being back in the house of the Lord. We lift up Brother Fritz, oh God, right now in, in Jamaica as he funeralizes his mother and other persons that are in bereavement. Oh God, Brother Price. We continue to lift up the Nahunu family. God, that you'll strengthen them and encourage them. Oh God. Hallelujah. God, even those unspoken requests, those, those things that are on the hearts of your people that are in the congregation today, God, you know you're here. This is the confidence that we have in you. That if we pray, God, we know that you hear us. God, you hear us. God, you hear us. This poor man cried and the Lord heard him and delivered him out of all of his troubles. Many of the afflictions of the righteous, but God, you delivered us out of them all. Touch that man's ear problem. Touch that man's eye problem. Oh, Shandama. That person is struggling with addictions. We pray that the bondage will be broken off their life today in the name of Jesus. That person that does not know you as Savior, we pray today that they'll come to the saving knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. You were wounded for our transgressions. You were bruised for our iniquities. And the chastisement of our peace was upon you. And with your stripes we are healed. So we claim our healing. We declare today as it was preached on Friday. It is finished. It is finished. Whatever the enemy thought. My God that he could hold us hostage with. Today we declare it is finished in Jesus name. God, as we bring our offerings, our first fruit to you, we commit to you and believe that, God, you're going to bless us in abundance. You're going to return it back to us a hundredfold. As we give, give and it shall be given back to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, shall men give into your bosom. And so, God, we're, we're thankful for the tithers. 
the people that will give a, a tenth of their income back to the Lord, saying, Lord, you blessed us, you've made a way for us, you've provided for us. For the tithe is holy unto you. Glory to God. We thank you for those that were given offering, those, those that were given, oh God, their pledge today, oh God, of the Project Gideon 300, those that will join us. God, we are thankful, God, we appreciate you, God. We worship you, God, we honor you, God, we give you glory. Bless your people, multiply, increase, show them favor, bless them going out, bless them coming in, cause them to run over with your goodness. Let the anointing be upon their life. Let healing be their portion. Let the outpouring of the Holy Spirit be experienced. And God, for these things, we'll give you thanks. For these things, we'll give you glory. And we'll give you honor. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Will you give the Lord a clap off of the praise? Let's declare together, my knees are met. I'm out of debt. There's plenty more to put in store, to feed the poor. Again, my needs are met. I'm out of debt. There's plenty more to put in store, to feed the poor. And my God, and my God shall supply all my needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Give and be blessed as you give to the work of the Lord. We rise and declare that no one, nowhere We can't live without your love Cause you are holy God Sing oh, 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 oh forever You are holy God oh, 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 forever Your love is there Your love is there It's everywhere
Jesus went to Calvary to save a wretch like you and me. That's love. That's love. Sing Jesus went. Jesus went to Calvary to save a wretch. To save a wretch like you and me. That's love. Oh. The tree that gave me life, oh so divine, where my Savior hung with love and pain aligned. His arms stretched wide, a crown of thorns on his head, blood and tears flowing with each breath he bled. He took on our sins as if they were his own, nails piercing his flesh, he bore it all alone. But in his death hope and salvation were born. Through his sacrifice, the ultimate gift was sworn. The tree that gave me life, a symbol of love, eternal life and grace reigning from above. For in his death, we were made whole. Through his resurrection, we were given a new soul.
After the Sabbath, at the dawn on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to look at the tomb. There was a violent earthquake, for an angel of the Lord came down from heaven and going to the tomb, rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was lightning and his clothes were white as snow. The guards were so afraid of him that they shook and became like dead men. The angel said to the women, do not be afraid for I know that you're looking for Jesus. He was crucified. He is not here, he has risen just as he said. Come and see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples that he has risen from the dead and he is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him. Now I have told you. So the women hurried away from the tomb afraid yet filled with joy and ran to tell his disciples. Then Jesus said to them, do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. Then the 11 disciples went to Galilee to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. When they saw him, they worshiped him, but some doubted. Then Jesus came to them and said, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore go and make disciples of all nations baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of age. in 
Hallelujah. There was the blood applied. Glory to his name. I'm going to ask you if you can turn in your Bibles with me to Hebrews chapter 2 verse 14 and 15. Hebrews chapter 2 verse 14 and 15. Will you give our music and arts department a great round of applause? Or thank God for them. Come on, you could do better than that. You could do better than that. Let's appreciate them. Amen. Hebrews chapter 2 verse 14 and 15 and it reads, for as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same, that through death he might destroy him that had the power of death, that is, the devil, and deliver them who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. Just let me read those verses again. For as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same. And through death he might destroy him that had the power of death, that is the devil, and deliver them who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. This morning, I wanna just talk to you a little bit about how great is God's love for us. How great is God's love for us. Father, I pray today that you would speak a word to our hearts, that you would minister. God, there's someone in here that does not know you personally as their Savior, that needs to come to the saving knowledge of you, Jesus. So Holy Spirit, minister to the hearts of people, even now, begin to quicken them, begin to convict them. Begin to delve down into their hearts of God where they're broken, where they're hurting, where they're in need of salvation. For there is no other name under heaven whereby men may be saved except the name of Jesus. So God, we want to experience your grace, your strength, your power. Manifest your goodness. And we pray this now in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. You may be seated. One of the greatest lies that Satan has attempted to perpetrate in the hearts and minds of human mankind is that God does not love us. That God is detached. detached. He, is, he is removed from our sufferings and our, our pains. And he does not understand the challenges of life that we continue to encounter each day. In those moments when you feel overwhelmed by the weight of the pressures of life, he whispers, where is your God now? When it seems like the world has toppled on your shoulders, when it looks like everything is falling apart around you, where is God? When you look at the poverty, the disasters and the suffering that people go through in this world, how could a God of love allow this to take place and some of you in your workplace some of you in the schools where you go uh, you you hear this question asked how can a god of love allow these things to happen when there's a tragic death of a loved one that may have had the promise of bright a bright future before them but all of a sudden their life is cut off if there's a God, why didn't he prevent it? If he truly loved them, why did he let it take place? But I want to make this statement, and I want everyone to hear me clearly today. I want it to resound in your hearts. I want it to resound in your hearing. I want you to know that God unequivocally loves you. Come on, look at your name and say, God loves you. 
God loves you in spite of what you might experience, of what you might feel, and in spite of the thoughts that the enemy tries to imprint, implant in your mind. God loves you. Romans chapter 5, verse 8, according to the New International Version says, but God demonstrates his own love for us in this, that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. John 15 and 13 tells us, greater love than this than no man that he laid down his life for his friends he loved you enough to give his life for you God's love was so demonstrated in the fact that in all of his holiness he was willing to take upon himself sinful human flesh just to reconcile you back to himself. The first Adam failed in the Garden of Eden, but the God of heaven, before, before the foundations of the world, had a plan in place to restore and redeem man back into right fellowship and communion with himself. Praise team, earlier saying the song, there's no shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me, oh my God. Can I just say those words again? There's no shadow you won't light up. No mountain you won't climb up coming after me. There's no wall you won't kick down. Lie you won't tear down coming after me. Why? Because of the matchless, reckless love of God. The Bible says in John 1, 14, and the word was made flesh up and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. The word was made flesh. God loved us so much that he was willing to be identified with like sufferings and pains so that he might redeem us, so that he might pay the purchase price for us. Jesus paid a price he did not owe. We owe the debt we could not pay. That's why we sing the chorus. Jesus paid it all, all to him. I owe sin had left a crimson stain. He washed it white as snow. I want you to get the essence of this. When crimson, the color crimson, it's a red, purplish color. When it gets ingrained in the fabric of a, a material, my God, there's almost no cleaners. My God, that can get that deep stain. My God, out of the clothes, of the fabric, of the clothes. My God, and that tells us how deep we were stained by sin. But his blood, his blood, his blood, his blood, his blood washed us white as snow. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is that flow that makes me white as snow. No other fount. I know nothing but the blood of Jesus. Anybody thank God for the blood? Oh, the writer goes on to say, this is all my hope and peace. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. This is all my righteousness. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is that flow that makes me white as snow. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. It reaches to the highest mountain. It flows to the deepest valley, the blood. Oh, That's how much Jesus loved us. Yes, Jesus, a God made flesh, came in human form like us, sat under the same sun, uh, under the same moon, uh, saw the same stars in the sky that we saw at night. 
and though he came in the flesh, he was yet 100% God and 100% man. As God, he was omnipotent, all-powerful, omniscient, all-knowing, omnipresent, everywhere at the same time. He was the changeless God, the immutable God, the transcendent Lord that is not limited by space and time, the God of eternity, the God that was, the God that is, the God that ever shall be, the sovereign, majestic Lord, my God, but though he was God, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but himself, made himself of no reputation, and took upon him a form of a servant, and was in the likeness of man, likeness of men, like emotions, like passions, uh, like feelings, uh, like pains, uh, like man. Uh, he was thirsty, uh, John 19 and 21. Uh, he was weary, uh, John 4 and 6. Uh, he had compassion, uh, Luke 7 and 13. Uh, he wept, uh, John 11 and 35. Uh, he was hungry, uh, Matthew 21 and 18. Uh, he suffered pain, uh, Mark 15 and 15. Uh, they flogged him, uh, they scourged him. Uh, he was rejected. Uh, he came unto his own, uh, and his own received him not. Uh, he was abandoned. Uh, and I know sometimes uh, there are people, uh, my God, that feel rejected and alone. Uh, but he sat where you sit. He went through what you were feeling, what you were experiencing. He felt alone. Uh, he said from the cross, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? He was falsely accused. My God, despite the accusations that were made against him, Pilate said, my God, neither does Herod nor myself find no fault in this man. My God, Pilate even tried to wash his hand from the stain of guilt. He was humiliated stripped before the proud of his accusers. He was betrayed by his own. Have you ever felt betrayed? As a friend that you thought was close to you, someone that wouldn't tell your secrets, but they disappointed you. They broke your heart. Jesus went through what you went through. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities uh, and the chastisement of our peace uh, was upon him and with his stripes we are healed. Second Corinthians 5 and 21 uh, says for he hath made himself uh, to be sin for us. He who knew no sin, uh, yeah, yeah. he who knew no sin, the righteous savior, he who knew no sin became sin, that he might, might be made the righteous of God in him. What made him do it? What made him do it? Gave up heaven's splendor to live amongst man's depravity. What would make him exchange a crown of thorns for a thorn? A throne for a cross. Hebrews 2 and 16 says, For verily he took not on him the nature of angels, but he took on himself the seed of Abraham. Of Abraham. Oh my God. My God. The Bible tells us, uh, my God, in, in Psalms 8, verse 4 and 5, What is man? Oh, that thou art mindful of him and the son of man that thou visitest him. For thou hast made him a little lower than the angels and is crowned with glory and splendor. What was it that provoked a supreme God to take on lowly humanity? It was love that did it. Oh, Shanda Manda. It was love that did it for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son uh, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish oh shut up 
to have everlasting life. Why should you surrender your life to God today? Uh, nobody will love you like God. Nobody will care for you like God. Nobody will walk through your struggles like God. No one will be with you in the time of trouble like God. No one can bring you out of your place of, of suffering and degradation but God. No one can heal you like God. No one can save you like God. No one can deliver you like God. He loves us. He loves us. He loves us. I can't get any message across to you today, but this God loves you. Come on, one more time. Look at your name and say, God loves you. Despite your failures and your flaws, God still loves you. Uh, and the thing about it, he loves you unconditionally. He's not waiting on you to get it together. He's not waiting on you to cross every T and dot every I. He loved you. Even while we were yet sinners. Uh, the love of God is greater far than tongue or pen can ever tell. It goes beyond the highest star. Uh, and reaches the Lord's hell. When I think about the Lord's hell, the guilty pair bowed down with care. God gave his son to win. His erring child he reconciled and pardoned from his sin. Oh, love of God, how rich and pure, how measureless and strong. It shall forevermore endure. The saints and angels sing. Ah, th this song was written by a man by the name of Frederick Lehman. Frederick Lehman, as a little boy of about 11 years old, gave his heart to the Lord and dedicated his life to the Lord, went to ministerial training Ah, uh, even became uh, uh, the, 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 the person that initiated the Nazarene publishing house. But somehow along life's way, uh, he ran into some calamity, some trouble, some hard times, uh, and he lost everything. And even in the loss of everything, uh, uh, he, uh, while working on a truck, Packing oranges uh, and lemons. Uh, he sat down uh, and he penned, uh, My God, the two stanzas. Uh, my God. And the chorus again says, Oh, love of God. How rich and pure. Despite how low he felt, despite how dejected he felt, despite the fact that he had lost everything, he said, God, still loves me. You see, what Christ sacrificed, we gained in return. God loves you. God loves you. No matter what circumstances of life you're going through, God loves you. It cost Jesus everything. It cost him his life. He took on himself the weight of sin. He endured the cross, despising the shame. He surrendered himself to death, though death had no power over him. His love for us caused him to suffer for us. He identifies with our pain. And because he has experienced what we experience, we now have a high priest that can be touched with the feeling of our infirmities. Hebrews chapter 2 verse 18 says, For in that he himself hath suffered being tempted, he is able to secure or succor them that are tempted. Because he endured, he, he now identifies with whatever you are going through right now, but he knows how to aid you in your time of temptation. 
He knows how to come to your rescue. He knows what you need, when you need it, how you need it, where you need it. Oh, hallelujah. Anybody glad that Jesus, Jesus felt what you felt, what he experienced, what you experienced? He felt, oh, Rabakataya Moshata. He is in the battle with you. He does not leave you in the struggle. Oh, I know the financials, the finances are, are, are getting high and, and, and things don't look good. I know you've experienced loss in your life, maybe loss of your mother, loss of your friend. Ah, but he has not left you to, to grieve alone. He has not left you uh, to struggle alone. He's in the fight with you. Somebody needs to know that. Come on, look at your neighbor and say, God is in this with you. He's the captain of, of your salvation who was made perfect uh, through sufferings. Uh, uh, and because uh, he was victorious uh, and because uh, he overcame, uh, so shall you overcome. Uh, Romans chapter 8, verse 37 uh, through 39 says, Nay, uh, in all of these things, uh, we are more than conquerors uh, through him uh, that loved us. It says, for I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor death, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus. I don't care what the enemy tries to make a breach between you and God. He cannot separate you from the love of God, God still loves you. There's no sin that you have committed that's so deep that God can't reach us. He still loves you. I want you to say this to your neighbor. Say, neighbor, you are a victor, not a victim. You are a winner, not a loser. You're, de you're a champion, not defeated. How do I know that? Because Jesus was victorious. And Jesus says, as I overcame, so shall you overcome. How do I know that greater is he that is in you? than he that is in the world. How do I know that? But thanks be unto God, which giveth us the victory through Christ Jesus. We are victorious. Come on, one more time. Look at your neighbor say, neighbor, neighbor. you are a victor, not a victim. You are a winner, not a loser. You are a champion. You are not defeated. Don't let the enemy tell you it's over for you. No, Jesus went to the cross and he declared it is finished. The conflict is over. The battle is ended. Your sickness is healed. It is finished. Whatever troubles are in your life, it is finished because of Jesus. He is the risen Lord. God's not dead. God's not dead. God's not dead. He's yet alive. How do I know he's alive? I feel him in my hand. I feel him in my feet. I feel him all over me. When I get depressed, he lifts me up. When I feel sick, he heals me. When I'm troubled, he comes to my aid. When I need a counselor, he's a wonderful counselor. Look to your neighbor and say, do you know who Jesus is? 
If you knew who he was, uh, you'll fall in love with him. Uh, he's the lily of the valley. Uh, he's the bright and morning star. He's the sweet rose of Sharon. Uh, he's the lion of the tribe of Judah. He's the root out of Jesse. Uh, he's the first and the last. Uh, he's the king of kings. Uh, he's the Lord of lords. Uh, he's the prince of peace. Uh, he's the mighty God. Uh, he's the everlasting father. I wish you would lift your hand up and give God a praise. <laughs> Scripture says, for as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also likewise took part of the same and through death he might destroy him that had the power of death. That is the devil. I know you have an enemy, but your enemy is already defeated. Hey! Look at your neighbor and say, your enemy is already defeated. The Bible says, and deliver them who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. I wish I had those chains that were out here. We were shackled by sin. We were destined for a dark domain of hell. Oh, Rabbi Basa. Destruction was our portion. We were chained to death. We had no hope. Generation after generation had nothing to look forward to but death. Hey, Shata. We were held hostage. We were prisoners. But the song says, he set me free. He set me free. He broke the bonds of, of prison for me. And now I'm glory bound, uh, my Jesus to see. Uh, anybody here been set free? And the Bible says, he that the son set free. Shatabashata. No more shackles. I'm no more a prisoner. I've been set free by the blood of Jesus. How did it happen? How did I gain my freedom? Jesus went to the cross, suffered for me. He died the death that I should die. He was whipped with the cat of nine tails being raked on his back with glass, with metal, with rocks. And those of you that were here on Friday heard by how Brother Stephen so broke it down. Ah, they lacerated his back, pulling the very flesh from the bow. Oh, Rabbi Sata. And on that raw back, they place the top of that tree. Oh, uh, yeah. That could have weighed 70 to 170 pounds upon his back and made him carry his cross to his death place. They took a crown of thorns and crushed it on his brow. Blood came trickling down. Depleted of blood, exhausted from a beating of 39 stripes, lacerated 
my God, opening his flesh to infections, to disease. Ah, they were trying to beat him to, into a place of a stupor. But what made him endure it? What made him go through it? What made him not die till the work was finished? It was love. I was seeking deep in sin, far from the peeps for sure. But the master of the sea heard my despairing cry and from the waters lifted me. Now save am I. Love lifted me. Love lifted me when nothing else could help. Let me say that again. When nothing else could help, it was love. that lifted me. He was mocked. They smote him on his face. They plucked hairs from his beard. Shandabakasata. His clothes were stripped. They nailed him with spikes. I can hear the sound of the hammer as it bore through his flesh. Pour through his feet. It was not the nails that held him to the cross. They were strong. They were fast and tight, but they could not hold him on the cross. If he wanted to, he could have called down legions from heaven to come and free him from the cross. But it was love that fastened him to the cross. It was love for you and love for me. Can somebody thank God for his love? Can somebody thank God for his love? He hung on that tree till the sun refused to shine. I wish you could just dim the lights just a little. Nobody walking. Ah. The sun could no longer give us glare of light. Oh, shut up, shut up. There was darkness on the face of the earth. The Bible says the veil of the temple was rent from top to bottom. Now I have access to go boldly to the throne room of grace and find help in my time of need. Is there anybody in trouble? Is there anybody in a crisis? Does anyone have a 911 call? I got good news for you. You have access through Jesus Christ. The earth quaked and the rocks began to break in pieces. That didn't get their attention. Dead folks started to coming up out of the grave. They started seeing dead folks walking around Jerusalem. That's my cousin. That, that was my mother. That was my brother. What's, what, 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 what just happened? The centurion said, surely this was the son. He was crucified for something he did not do. He was hung between two thieves that deserved death. Ah. 
And one of the thieves had nerve to criticize him. And they were in the same condition. If you be the Christ, save yourself and save others. Wow, wow, wow. And you know how you get. If somebody start mocking you, you want to show who you are. But Jesus surrendered his power. Oh, shut up. Hanging from the cross between those thieves. He said, Father, into thine hands I commend my spirit. And he gave up the ghost. Jesus was placed in a borrowed tomb. Ha! Ah. And Satan for sure thought, I got him now. My plot my plan, I used the chief priests, I used the Roman soldiers, I used the crowd, the multitude. Uh, it, it, it worked! But remember what he said. He said he went to the cross to defeat devil, Satan, who had the power of death. Wow, 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 wow. I'm almost finished, I promise you. They said he was in the grave for three days and three nights, but he was not asleep in the grave. Somebody said for three days he was doing a three-day revival in hell. Oh, Shatta. Uh, preaching to Abraham and preaching to Isaac and to Jacob, those that were prisoners of death. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 9 and 10 says, Now that he ascended, what is it that he also descended? First into the lower parts of the earth. Look at your neighbor and say, Jesus went to hell for you. So you don't have to go to hell. Come on, turn to somebody else and say, Jesus went to hell for you. So you don't have to go to hell. See, I, we don't want to talk like that. But the Bible says, hell hath enlarged itself. And it's opened up his mouth. And everyone that won't acknowledge Jesus as Savior, that won't receive the love of God, your destiny. Oh, it's hell. But he that descended is the same also that ascended up far above all heavens that he might feel all things. Though he surrendered to death, death had no power over him. In John 10, verse 17 and 18, he said, Therefore doth my father love me because I laid down my life that I might take it again. No man taketh it from me, but I lay it down of myself. I have the power to lay it down, and I have the power to take it up again. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Let me say it again. I have the power to lay it down. Devil, oh, yeah, I just gave you a, I just gave you a vacation, but, but it's not over yet. It's not over yet. It's not over yet. I, I, I surrendered myself to death. I, I was not just asleep and came out of a coma and woke up. I died. I went to the lower parts of hell. I surrendered it to you. But I also have the power to take it up. Jesus, you said that, but I, I, live in the, I live in the show me society. You got to prove it to me. I, I, I know you said if, if, if you put, if you tear down this temple in three days, I'll build it back again, but you got to show me. I know you said as Jonah went into the belly of the fish for three days and three nights, but came out, so shall the Son of Man be. But you got to show me. Ah, uh, wow. The third day was coming. 
Jesus stared death, hell, and the grave in the face. Ha, ha, ha. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The Son of God ah, said it's time to stop preaching now. My work here is done. And as he began to stare death, hell, and the grave in the face, uh, I want you to understand the devil could not defeat him. Hell could not deny him. Death could not contain him. Oh, the grave, the grave was not his final resting place. The Bible says, then was brought to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. Oh, death, where is your sting? Oh, grave, where is your victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be unto God, but thanks be unto God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. My God, victory over death, victory over sin. Jesus declared, I am he that liveth and was dead. My God, and behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. I have the keys of hell and of death. Devil, you thought you had me. But it was just a, a hiatus a, for a moment. A, just as I said it, a, I have risen again. A, death had no power over me. A, the grave a, had no power over me. A, and you a, have no power over me. A, that's why the Bible says a, in Romans chapter 8, a, my God, verse 20, a, my God, that the devil is under our feet. A, he's not over our head because of, of he that lives on the inside of us because of the victory that Jesus experienced today my God we serve a risen Savior and he's alive today I wish I had somebody that knew how great the love of God was that he loved you that that loving Savior that went to Calvary didn't just stay on the cross. My God, he went into a grave, but he got out of the grave and declared all power, all power is given unto me, both in heaven and earth. Can I tell you today, he is victorious. He's a risen savior. I dare you to turn around to three people and say he's a risen savior. He's a risen savior. Lift up your heads, uh, O ye gates, uh, and be lifted up, uh, ye everlasting doors, uh, and the King of glory uh, shall, uh, shall uh, come in. Uh, who is uh, the King of glory? Uh, who is uh, the King of glory? Uh, the Lord, uh, strong and mighty, uh, the Lord. Uh, mighty in battle he is the king of glory i wish i had somebody that knew the love of god that they experienced the power of salvation my god paul said for i am not ashamed of the power of the i am not ashamed of the gospel of jesus christ it is the power of god unto salvation both unto the Jew uh, and unto the Greek. Uh, I've been delivered. Uh, I've been set free. Uh, and if you've been set free, uh, let me hear your voice uh, with praise. Uh, if you know the risen Savior, if you know he's alive today, uh, give him praise. Uh, give him praise. Uh, let the redeemed, uh, let the redeemed, uh, let the redeemed, uh, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Turn to somebody and say, God's not dead. God's not dead. He's still alive. God's not dead. He's still alive. Can you feel him? Can you sense his presence? 
Can you sense his glory? Can't you sense his anointing? I wish I had somebody that would give him a praise because of what he's done for me. I must praise him. I must worship him. I will bless the Lord at all times. And his praise shall continually be in my mouth. Let the humble hear the earth and be glad. Oh, magnify. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. And let us, and let us. Somebody give me praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Look at somebody say, you don't know. But I know what he's done for me. I was lost without hope. But amazing grace. Amazing grace. How sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I was blind. I was lost. It was his grace. It was his love. Somebody say, what love has to do with it? Love has everything to do with it. And because of his love, I give him praise. I give him worship. I give him worship. Stand with me. Stand with me. Hallelujah. Because he loved me, he took on human flesh. Though he was God, he said, I'm willing to be identified with you. If you read in those verses, he says, he even called us brethren. He says, I became the elder brother of your salvation. I became the captain of salvation. I connected with you. I bled for you. I endured for you. I died for you. But I did not stay in the grave on the third day. The resurrection power that I rose with it's the same power that is able to save you. I want you to close your eyes and bow your head. You know, there's a lot of truth in this message. So many people feel unloved. As I prepared this word, the Lord said to me, there are people walking around dejected feeling like the world has turned their back on them. There are people that feel alone. There's some that even feel suicidal. They feel hopeless. There's some people in here, you're depressed, you're in a dark place. And those you thought loved you, those you thought cared for you, When the time came, they let you down. They disappointed you, they failed you. They did not come through for you. But if you never met him, I wanna introduce you to Jesus. Who would never leave you, who would never forsake you. I, I, I wanna introduce you to Jesus who will love you in life that will go with you in death. Hey, <laughs> Shatala I wanna introduce you to Jesus that says, you don't have to go to hell. I've already done it for you. I love you. Across this room, he loves you, he loves you, he loves you. 
He loves you. He loves you. He loves you. And, and you know, I know it's good that you came to church this morning. But that's not what it's all about. Because I must tell you, if you came to church this morning and you go home without knowing Jesus, the truth of the matter is you just came to church. If you just want to say you came for Easter and it was, we had a good time and I felt the presence of God and it felt good, it's not good enough. If you give money to the church, your name is still on the church roll. You say 20 years ago I was baptized. I'm involved in this, I'm involved in that. I do all kinds of things in society to help people. I'm a philanthropist. But you don't know Jesus. The Bible says, for the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life. What shall it profit a man to gain the whole world but lose his own soul? Ah, yeah, basata, basata. If you're waiting on the president to save you, they can't save you. If you're waiting on retirement, you may never get there. The best retirement package is Jesus. The, bless, the best insurance plan is blessed assurance. Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. I'm a, a, a salvation. I've been purchased of God. I've been washed in his blood. And I walk through the church for a purpose, for a purpose, because I want to make sure nobody here misses it. Nobody says I didn't have a chance. Because one day you will stand before God. And you will give an account for every song you heard. For every time somebody preached a sermon. Every time you heard something on the radio that sent the message to you about Jesus, but you said, not now. Tomorrow, next week, when I get my degree, when I get my house, when I get married, all of those things may never come. Now is the day of salvation. The day you hear his voice, hard not your heart. I want you to take a moment and I want you to reflect on what I just said. If you, if you don't get anything today, I want you to know God loves you. And you may say, I, I, I'm just, I'm too messed up. My life is, is too broken. My life, he can't do anything with me. Peter felt messed up. Peter had denied Christ three times in the cock crow. He was so guilty. He was so sorrowful. But even before Jesus went back to his father, he says, go tell my disciples and Peter to meet me in Galilee. He hasn't forgotten you. He sees you where you are. He knows what you're going through. He knows what you're experiencing. And he's calling your name, whether it be Elizabeth, whether it be Mary, whether, whether it be Jack, whether it be Joe, whether it be Eric, whether it be Danny. What, no matter what your name is, he's calling for you. Somebody say, I, I, I got a Jamaican name, so he didn't call my name, so that doesn't include me. I got a Spanish name. That, that, can I tell you? He's calling you. And whatever language you speak, he's calling you. Whatever origin you're from, he's calling you. So I want to give you a chance to think about it. But then I want you to take a moment and just turn to one person. And can you just hold one person's hand for me? Can you, uh, 
I want you to hold that person's hand knowing that you may hold the key to that person's destiny. You may hold the key to that person's destiny. You may hold the key to that person's destiny. You may hold the key to that person's destiny. I want you to ask that person, say, if you were to die right now. Come on, ask them. I'm looking at you. I'm looking at you. I see some of you not looking. Not, not even if you were to die right now. You may be the one that needs this. Come on, say, if you were to die right now. Where would your soul spend eternity? Come on, ask them again. Say, if you were to die right now. Are you ready to go back with God? Oh, Rabasata, Basata. Why do I do this? Because it's urgent. It's serious. There were people that were here last Easter that are not here now. Young man that I grew up with, or yet grew up around me. You would think he was healthy. You would think life was before him. But I talked to his mom on the phone and a condition that he had had reoccurred. And in a matter of moments, he was gone into eternity. One of my professors in school, he went to bed. This past week, he went to bed and he did not wake up. Died in his sleep. Not an old man. We know not the day nor the hour when the Son of Man shall come. People are already coming to the altars. I want you to ask your neighbor one more time. Say, if you were to die right now, are you ready to go back with the Lord? Now wait on an answer. Get an answer. I want, I want you to get a yes or no answer. If you were to die right now, are you ready? It could happen. It could happen. It could happen. It could happen. Just as quick as that. And that, if that person could not say yes, I want you to take their hand and walk down to these altars. I know it seems like a long walk, but I'll walk with you. Walk down to these altars. Walk down to these altars. Today is your opportunity. Today is your chance. Don't miss this time. Don't miss this moment. This is a God moment. He's calling for you. He's calling for you. He's calling for you. He's calling for you. He cares about you so much. He loves you so much that he will give you this last chance. He will give you this last opportunity. Don't wait on your cousin. Don't wait on your brother. Don't wait on your sister. You come. You come. You know the condition of your heart. You know the condition of your life. I stand at the door and knock. I stand at the door and knock. If any man will open, I will come in and sup with him. Oh, it is Jesus. He's calling you. Yes, it is Jesus. He's calling you. He's calling you. It is, it is Jesus. He's calling you. He's calling you. You need to be to these altars. There are 30 more people. You need to be to these altars. Don't hesitate. Don't wait. 
Savior, but my family is struggling. I'm going through a crisis. I'm going through a battle. You need prayer. When you come, we want to pray with you. Bring your family. We want to pray with you. This is your chance. Will you come? We want to pray with you. Will you come? We invite you to these altars. We want to pray with you. Heavenly Father, we come before you now and we present your children. God, there are people hurting. There are people in need of a touch. They're in need of deliverance, salvation. Jesus ministered to them. You said, if any man come to you, you will in no wise cast him out. Thank you, God, that you love us. Thank you, God, that you care for us. Thank you, God, that you endured the suffering for us. Thank you, God, that you were willing to be identified with us. We love you, Jesus. And the way we can show you our love and our gratitude is by surrendering our life to you and saying yes to your will and yes to your way. There might be one that's at your seat and you said, I couldn't come because I'm holding a baby. I got children around me. I, I'm limited in my mobility. But I want you to pray this prayer with me. If you know you need salvation, I want you to pray this prayer with me. And congregation, will you pray with me? Say, Father. Congregation, you pray with me. Say, Father. Here I am. You know all about my life. I ask you today 
to forgive me of my sins, to come into my heart and become my savior. I believe that you died, that you were buried, that you were resurrected on the third day. And today by faith, I claim you as my savior and my Lord. Thank you, Lord, for saving me. Thank you, Lord, for washing my sins away. Today, I am a new creature in Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. Come on, let's celebrate with them. Their newness in Christ. Let's give God a praise. Let's give God worship. Oh, it is Jesus. Oh, it is Jesus. Yes, it is Jesus. Yes, it is Jesus. It is Jesus in my soul. For I have come to him of his garment and his love. 
Blessed is Jesus. at the heart of God when people give their life to him when they surrender to Jesus and today we are thankful for every heart, every soul, every person that came to church this morning will we just give the Lord a clap off and a praise persons are still being ministered to around the altars and we don't want to ever move too fast where you can't get a touch from the Lord Amen. Can I tell even Rehoboth people, this is the time to get ministered to right here. This is the time, not when the pastor's out there in the hallway and you say, I need prayer. This is the time right now. So if you stop me today, I'm going to say, thank you, Jesus. And you know what that means. Amen. Amen. Let me say this. And I'm going to conclude, and then they're going to come with the benediction. Remember, we do have fish on sale downstairs. I want to tell you, there's enough for everybody here. Uh, you can purchase a bag of fish. You can purchase a single fish, whatever you like to do. Uh, we just want you to support Rehoboth. I want to tell you, it's a tremendous blessing. Uh, I want to pray over this time of going downstairs with the fish. And I want to, the reason why I want to pray because Jesus took the two fish and the five barley loaves and he blessed them. I want to bless these fish and I want to multiply them and I want them to go home and fill you up and you be blessed to the Lord. Father, I just pray today you have blessed us during this sale and God, we ask for your continual favor as you touch and prick your hearts, uh, prick the hearts of your people as they go downstairs and support this effort. God, I know many of them can go to the fish market and, and, and purchase this, but God, today, I believe they want to be a blessing to your house. And God, those that have come to the altar and given their heart to the Lord, I pray that he that have begun a good work in them will continue until the day of Jesus Christ. That God, they will link up with our discipleship ministry. That they will allow us to lead them in their first steps with you. We thank you for all of our guests. We thank you for... Every, day, every person that is with us, bless them, keep them, cause your face to shine upon them. God, give, grant them peace. Cause them to go in your strength, to go from faith to faith and glory to glory. And we pray this now in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Just remain still just for a moment. Shall we praise the Lord? Praise the Lord another time. Put your hands together for our bishop. Praise God. This is our spiritual father. God bless him. Uh, as you exit, uh, there's pictures and the hallways. You can take a look at that as you exit. Uh, let's stand for the benediction. Hallelujah. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you and give you peace. My brothers and sisters, as you go, may the Lord go with you. Have a great week. God bless you. Greet someone as you go. Thank you for joining Rehoboth's live stream. If you need prayer or have given your life to Jesus Christ, call us at 844-305-9935. We hope you've enjoyed our worship experience. Please stay tuned for these upcoming announcements and have a great week. <laughs>